We got a commercial building on fire too. Going pretty good. I'm gonna get this hydrant. Yeah. Watch the line. Front line, front stinger, front stinger. The main concern when we're responding to an RV fire is life. So you gotta figure somebody could still be in that RV. Check the building. The exposure's on fire. I need somebody to go in the building. Go for it, Paulie. Get, get, get another one. Pull it into three-quarter. Get inside there. Double check a primary and secondary in here. Get in here with your life. I'm in here, dude. Hey, right here. LA-16, go ahead and start the Edison, too. We have power lines on fire. Give me that up there. Go ahead. It is my job as a fire ground commander to be the, the guy's eyes and ears. I can see what sometimes what they don't see. A high voltage power line, it, it could end their life. Dave, do you hear anybody? Come on. Nobody's in there, right? Dave, inside is clear. Inside is clear. Yeah. We're good. So we're en route to a cardiac arrest on Sunset Boulevard, male 50s. It says man down with a great tank top. Move, come on, come on. Oh, they're doing CPR on it. Engine copy, we're on scene already. Copy, squad eight on scene. CPR in progress. Let's go. Hey, oh, yeah. Bring it down, start CPR. Ruben. Take over. All right, sir. I'll take it over from here. Yep. I'm my CN. What's going on? I walk up. Got to it. All right. Go I'll take care of it. Thank you. Anytime we go on a cardiac arrest, there's a sense of urgency. When a patient's heart stops beating, time is a huge necessity. And the sooner CPR is started, the better the odds are for them to have a positive outcome. How long were you doing CPR for? Four minutes. Four minutes? OK. He's uh, agonal breathing. Do we have a pulse? I can't feel anything. Set the Lucas device up. Got it. Uh, at Fire Station 8, we have a Lucas machine. It's essentially a machine that we strap on the chest of the patient, and it's, uh, it does the compressions for us. We'll be able to work and manipulate that patient however we need, and they're still going to get the efficient compressions. Did he just fall? Did he get hit by anything? I saw it initially. I called 911. OK. And then he came by and started doing CPR. So was he running? When you guys came up on me, he was already on, his, he was already on the ground. Got an airway in. Clear. We got pulses. He was pulseless. Go ahead, continue. Still on him, waiting to establish an IV right here. Get some fluids on board. Give me an OPA, please. OPA, copy. Let's see what rhythm we got here. Emily, yeah, you want me to take over on breath? Go for it. Got it. So you guys get an ID on him or not? Here you go. He's bagging him. He's getting the IO right now. Here, give me that bag. Here you go. Clear. You got pulses? Should have pulses here. Hey, we got a pulse. Copy. Get a flush. I'll we'll do a 12 lead and let's load them up in the back. Get out of here. OK, OK. Take a right here along the dirt road by the sheriff and see if we can get ahead of it and get an idea of what's ahead of it. Copy that. All right, let's try and stop this thing from running. We're going to the head. Right here, right here, right here. Right here. Yeah. Too far, too far. We're going to get both rear lines going. I'm taking one, too. All right. Take this. I'm going to grab both rear lines. We got uh, Murphy's on the end of this line. You can help him out. It's just important that we're moving quickly and we're moving smartly. Things that don't help us are wind and temperature. You might need to be shut down to connect the distance to the line. And it's always windy and it's always hot out there. Go for Zulu. 84 Captain, 84 Engineer on B-10. It's critical that we jump on these very, very quickly and keep them from turning into a large campaign fire. I got this here. Work your way that way. 84, go that way. Station 24. Uh, we're still about a minute from getting on scene. Before landing, check everybody's all secured. We're secure in the back. I'm going to go help them with a hand tool. 131's bringing their line up there. Make sure you've got all their water before they go. 
Firm 37 Zulu. We're adding another 100 feet right now to extend up around to you. When we have firefighters out cutting line, it looks like they're digging trenches, and what they're doing is removing fuel from the fire. Hey, watch your footing right here. We're gonna clean this up right here. Gonna with that. I'm thinking about safety for my crew. I'm thinking about water supply. There's no hydrants out in the middle of the hills. Each fire engine carries 500 gallons of water. That's what I'm allocated right now until helicopters start dropping water. We get a copter available. We get a drop at the head of this fire that'll knock the bulk of it off. Sending helicopter 532 and helicopter 6. Got a drop! Hey, go! Oh, that's pretty, uh... God, that's totally jacked up. Be careful stepping out. What do we got? Uh, Who's this gentleman in the white truck? OK. Uh, Who's the other patient? Are they, are they trapped in there? Uh, Does this patient need to get extricated? She's no, she's able, to, she's able to get out. She hit this car. OK. Going about 69 miles per hour. OK. So she's, she's altered. No, she thinks it's 1978. So. Okay. Right. Go get another backboard. Let's get her out. Uh, Anthony, you good? Yes. I was just complaining about chest pain. Uh, chest pain from uh, hitting uh, the abdominal pain. Okay. Did we check the uh, uh, seat belt? Um, I haven't. I haven't gone over there at all. Okay. LA Quint 125. We need to start a helicopter for a trauma patient. LA Copter 21 off of 71 incident and route. Please give us eight minutes more time. Zero eight. You got to be safe out there. See you on the next one. We don't know what's going on inside that patient. That patient could have abdominal bleeding, and that could cause serious consequences. So I need them at a trauma center in about 15 minutes. That's why the helicopter's called. Squad both legs on the full ground. Large board. Hold this phone. And we're about five minutes out. Copy. Oh. Yeah. Both sides. We got tourniquets on wow. Bleeding stop. 140 over 70 on people. We're always waiting for ambulance, right? Yeah, five minutes. Okay. Is he awake? Yeah, yeah. He's talking. So you got pinned between those two vehicles? He's starting to get nervous. Oh. Hey, Paco. Yeah. You want to give him a shot of morphine? Yeah, yeah. Give him a shot of morphine. Yeah. So when's your birthday? It's good to answer questions. When's your birthday? Oh. Get that morphine. I'll take that flush. I've seen broken bones, I've seen legs run over, but I've never seen someone's legs this bad. This is a real deal, and I know we have minutes to save this guy's life. Hey, Paco. Here we go, yep. You got four milligrams of morphine right here. Cool. These are literally life-saving seconds. Left. We're doing tourniquets, doing IVs, and pushing drugs, and we also have to monitor this patient's vitals. More right. morphine on board. Yeah. There is no room for error on, on calls like this. I'm gonna get on the phone, Perfect. just so when the ambulance gets here, we can roll. Uh, Francis Bay Squad 16 with a massive trauma patient. A young man uh, was pinned between two vehicles, getting something out of his car. Uh, sorry, bud. We have two tourniquets to the both extremities, just above the uh, the femur. We're in the process of putting him in the backboard, obvious uh, full C-spine precautions. You can expect us in about 10 minutes. I got one 12 over 84 on vitals, Romeo. Cool, thank you, Squad 16. Clear, bye. Stay with us, buddy. This is the part we were talking about, OK? We're going to have to move him. Slide him, slide him, slide him. Don't move, don't move. Yeah, I got his legs. Someone wants to grab his hips. All right, you guys ready? Got it. Let's go, guys. Come on. Come on. Here you go. One, two, three. Oh. Hey, buddy, how you doing? I know. We're going to give you some more for that pain. That pain's still a 10 out of 10 right now? Yeah. OK. Listen, when I get in the back, I'm going to touch your whole body. I'm going to squeeze everything. Let me know what's going to hurt you, what's hurting, OK? I know, but I got to touch everything, OK? What happened? You got hit by a car, boss. You know, I'm talking to that patient, you know, as if it was a friend of mine. And something that I would want is, like, I explain to him what I'm doing. I'm letting him know that he's going to be OK. Everything's going to be all right. I try to give him that strength or those words that they need to get through, you know, this kind of injury. Oh! All right, we're going to give you some more meds, man. Oh. We're good to go. Who's driving? Look at me. I'm going to touch your hips here. Ready? Down. Any pain? Any pain? 
Any pain where? On that left, right side? No pain on Hippo's right side. On yeah. the, obviously, hey, the legs are bad. All right, so right now, you are friendly partner? Lungs are good? Yeah, lungs are good. How are his pupils right now? Pupils are uh, constricted. Looks like he's feeling. That's me an 18. Oh. I'm going to push a little oh. more. Oh. Oh. Try to relax, buddy. Try to relax. Alex, hey, man. Can you talk to me? You try to tell me something? Alex, you're doing good, buddy, OK? You're doing real good. Nice and relaxed, OK? We're almost there, boss. <laughs> Five zero two six one sixteen. This is now an overdose. Visual rescue eighteen one six one of the propane. We're going on an unconscious on Hazel. It just gave cross streets. No, uh, Milladol should be right here. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. What's up with uh, him? Point pupils. We're gonna get a uh, Narcan on board. We're gonna go nasal. Hey. I'm gonna go one and one, Mike. Narcan, four mils. All right, on board. We're gonna start bagging him. Hey! He's uh, agonal breathing. Keep bagging him. When you take that narcotic and you overdose, essentially your respiratory system is starting to shut down. Still pinpoint pupils. All right, we'll just support ventilation. Uh, the brain is being starved of oxygen, and therefore, one by one, organs will begin to shut down. We'll give him another dose. Hey, another two on board. All right, OPAM. All right, team monitor, airway. Four on board now, Mike. Two and two. Got it. For a total of four. Two and two. Hey, buddy. Hey. He's pinpoint. We figured that the first two milligrams would bring him out his altered state. However, it didn't. Hey, buddy. That lets us know that he was in a pretty bad state. Whatever he took, he took a lot of it. Everything the same? No change? Not yet. Hey, hey how's he looking out? Eyes open? Yeah, people check. Still pinpoint. Copy. Let's give him another one. I got it. All right, then this will be our last one. Hopefully, this does it. Narcan. Hey, Mike, another two on board. All righty. Total of six on board. Hey, buddy. Running that blood pressure again. Our main thing is to worry about his respiratory rate. If he doesn't wake up, it will lead to respiratory arrest and eventually cardiac arrest, which is something we don't want. Still pinpoint. I'm going to get you a sugar. Hey, buddy. Hey. Blood pressure's coming up. Pulse is coming up. His respiratory rate did increase, which is a good thing but at a rate of four to eight a minute, which is not enough to sustain life. Hey, Mike, we can get a total of eight before calling base, so I don't know if you want to go that last one, but he's tolerating. OK. We're going to go ahead and give him that last one. Last one on board. It comes in. The ambulance is coming. It looks like a sinus arrhythmia. So we just titrated at this point, Mike. We're just going to monitor airway and just let him coast it out. There's not much more we can do. There you go. Tighten there a little go. bit. Hey, buddy. Hey. He is breathing on his own now. All right, good. His respiratory is coming up. Copy. Hey, good work, you guys. Looks like we're on the uh, third alarm. Oh, man, you can see it. Hey, that's a lot of smoke. I wonder if there's got to already be about 100 firefighters on scene. This fire is several miles outside of our station's jurisdiction. And with us being able to see the smoke from our station, we know it's a major incident that we're responding to. Grab the blitz, OK? We're going to set up for a defensive position. OK. Firefighters have died on things way smaller than that. So there's a lot of risks to where you know things could happen. So in the back of your mind, you are nervous about it. Captain. All right, Mike, you ready? Ready. Let's go. We're at the 35, we need to get on here. Simon, come up to 35. Captain 172, engineer 172, you ready for water? There's at least 30 to 40 different stations that are on scene of this fire. We're going to set that one up for a defensive. Ready for water. We're going to make our push with the attack line. Go. You have firefighters who are assigned to actually put out the fire. You have others who are assigned to protect, say, a property right next door to the main bulk of the fire that's threatened by fire. Check, check, check. Copy, Ronica. 
and you also have what we call engineers or firefighter specialists who are outside in charge of making sure they're getting enough water pressure to the firefighters that are on the other ends of the hose line. So really the biggest challenge right now is, is getting adequate water and foam onto the product. Ready for water. 172, ready for water. This is one of the biggest fires that I've seen in my 17 years in the fire service. The heat feels like it's stinging. It starts to sting on your ears first, and then the side of your neck. Look at that fire behavior. Oh my god. Okay. Listen, man. Concentrate your water over in this area right here. Look at that. There is points where I look back and I can't see the direction I came from. Being in this narrow driveway, if that wind does shift, there's a chance that that fire can get behind us and we can get trapped. Head injuries, we're more worried about the internal injuries. So he's got like a two inch lock on his cheek. Just on his cheek, it looks like that. He said he was hit with a metal pole and he's got yeah. the indentation. Okay. He's yeah. got another one here in the cut. Our big thing is knowing the patient's mental state. We want to see if he's still here mentally, if he's been knocked out, if he remembers the event. Those are really important for us. Y eso cuando fue? ¿Cuándo? Ok. Ahora okay. de trabajar. Ajá. Y abrí la puerta. Y se entró curiosamente a pegarnos. Ok. We'll get some ice packs, you guys. Let's put them in the back. We want to dress up those two on his face and his cheek, ok? We really want to get a real quick assessment. If it is trauma, we want to get him over to the nearest trauma center as fast as possible. I want to find the pole or the, the weapon. We got the assault weapon. I don't want to touch it. Hey, Paco, it's like a three-foot hollow uh, metal tube. Yeah, I didn't want to touch it because, you know, it might have fingerprints or something. It's got blood on it as well, so. So left side, left uh, temporal, yeah, left cheek. Yeah, left temporal, left cheek, that mild, that bruising. But there's no other cuts. Should that be? Can you tell you guys what happened? He said uh, the guy, he confronted him, and the guy got a, he went inside the room, and he got a, a rod. Yeah, it's like a hollow pipe. And they just hit him a couple times. It saddens me because you know we have hardworking people here to, to make a living, to, to provide and to work. And then you have like some crazy random guy just comes up and you know just ruins our day. And trying to get someone like that off the streets is, is very important. So te van a traer el señor ahorita. Creo que lo tienen. La policía te lo van a enseñar si lo quieres para decir que él fue. Okay. So we like to work together with the sheriffs and possibly prevent this happening to somebody else. Estás bien mirándolo, quieres que cerramos la puerta para que él no te vea. No, yo pienso que no, que no me mire. Que no me mire, okay. So we're going to close the doors. He just doesn't want to be seen. Si puedes mirar hasta donde está la, la patrulla? Sí, puedo ver. Okay. So then it's there. So this bender. Is this another person? No, 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 no,
Uh, let's see. Keep going on compression. Go ahead and give me the epi. I got it, thank you. All right, epi going in. Our squad is now up on scene. Warren. Yes, sir. He was eating dinner, uh -huh. began to choke, okay. and had a complete occlusion. Okay. Hope upon we, uh, our arrival, there was uh, CPR in progress. Keep bagging. I got a pulse. You got a pulse? I got a pulse. Perfect, all right. We can make the heart beat with chemicals, but the ability of that heart to sustain a mechanical pump on its own is our number one goal. But if we don't get this obstruction out of the airway, we're basically doing CPR on an oxygen starving heart, which is not gonna be effective. Suction, got it. Outstanding. Good job. Keep going, can you visualize the cords? No. Get it, tube ready, since he's already down there. Oh, suction, suction. We did pull some tortilla and some of his dinner out of his throat. His wife was not really understanding the situation because I think there were so many things happening and so many people bombarding in the room and she almost looked like she was in shock. His heart rate is too slow. So that's why we're gonna continue to do some compressions, okay? Just do little squeezes. But he's getting a little distended, so little squeezes. That's really good CPR. Do we have pulses right now? Rosie, feel right now real quick. Doesn't look like anything in his belly. No, all right, go ahead and start CPR. Keep going, keep going. We're getting run into the next post like rhythm check since we just did it, okay? No, hold on. You lost the pulse. No, hold on. Uh, just continue doing CPR. Next pulse track rhythm check. I want you to feel for a pulse while we're doing CPR. I have Epi going on board right now. Okay. So go ahead and feel for that pulse on our switch. I want you to do CPR. I want you to take over the bag, okay? Four, three. All right, no pulls, no going to start CPR. All right, so what's our total time right now? Total time, 18.55. Uh, going on 19 minutes. Okay. So the patient hasn't had a heartbeat or been breathing on their own for well over 20 minutes. So we would classify this patient as a severe distress patient. We are not going down a, a positive road. Five, four, three, two, one, go ahead and pause. Strong carotid pulse. Cool. All right. We got sustained ROSC with a pulse rate of 101. Hit the blood pressure cuff, too. As a paramedic, there's a calm excitement in the air. We've worked together as a, as a team and accomplished the, the common goal of getting their heartbeat back. It's that this is what I was trained for at the moment. Chris, if you want to start getting loaded. Okay. Cool, guys. Good job. Good job, Rosie. Thanks. Looks like we got somebody down next to the tracks. Got a lot of debris on the ground. A lot of debris, a lot of people around. Breathing has a pulse. Yeah. What do you guys got? All right, he's unconscious. He does have a pulse. He's very thready, but he's, and he's also just breathing very shallow right now. Pupils are dilated. We got to start cutting his clothes right now. Yeah. Sir, can you tell me your name? There's no step off on his, uh, on his neck. I don't feel any deformities. I don't feel any hematomas to the back of his head. Chest wall stable. All right, we'll get that seat collar on. Did you see what happened? I seen the old boy was just coming through here like. How fast was he going? Like 65. Like 65? Yeah. Sir. No, yeah, don't move, don't move, don't move. Do you see any trauma? <laughs> Looks like he has an abrasion on his forehead towards the oh. left side, and he has oh. an abrasion on his left knee. No hematomas to the head, no step off on his neck. He got tough. So when he got hit, did he go fly straight? Did he go up in the air? Uh, yeah, it was like a flip. He went up and over? Like a flip, yeah. Okay. The basket was way over there. He pulled the yeah. basket out the way. Now that I know that this person was hit at a high rate of speed, flew up in the air, and possibly landed on his head, I'm worried that he's having some brain swelling, and he needs to get to a trauma center as soon as possible. Hey, a uh, van was doing about 50 to 60 miles an hour. Stop, stop. No, no, hold on. We're going to help. Hold on. We're going to help you. We're going to help you. Stop. Uh, he's starting to move now. Don't move. No, 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 don't, don't. Hold, hold, guys, hold, 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 hold. It's very normal for people that have concussions or any head injuries to have them cause to be very confused, frantic, and agitated. Sir. Sir. Tape. Give me tape. Give me tape. I got one on this side. 
In the EMS world, we have a rule that's like the golden hour. If they make it within that hour, their chances of survivability increases. So it is our job to move as fast as possible, but do the right things so that we can increase that chance of survivability with the patient. Let's get those fluids on board, and then we'll get going. So right now, we're going to get him to the doctors within that golden hour. We'll have him there within 15 or 20 minutes of the time he got hit. So he should have a good chance of survival because he's still conscious. We're in route to a cardiac arrest for unknown female patient, unknown age. Unknown. So Mike, it looks like we're rolling with uh, Squad 171. Copy that. You're clear, right? Clear, right. Oh, it's a little girl? OK, OK. Whenever there's a child involved, our sense of urgency is actually higher because we know children can actually go down quicker than adults. So when we arrive to the scene, the first thing I'm doing is I'm checking to see if that child is breathing. And thank God that that child is. Uh, her number. Emily. Emily, can you hear me, Emily? Hey, Mags, any uh, see Emily, can you open your eyes for me? You want the monitor? OK. We see a child on the ground not moving. It's very hard not knowing because the, the unknown can be very scary. And you just run through the scenarios of what the possibilities can be. And for me, I think about the worst case scenario and work from there to the best case scenario in my head. So we go off of the symptoms that the child is showing and do what we have to do in order to save that child's life. She complaining of anything today? Mm. She's sick, anything? No, she does nothing. Nothing. She looks not like Norman this morning. Okay. Emily, can you open your eyes, sweetie? Open your eyes. You want a quick BP here, or you want it on the gurney or in the back? Yeah, you can do it here. Yeah. It's so small. Yeah, that's the smallest. Oh, my God, yeah. Hear me, Emily? Sinus rhythm, 94, no activity. Pupils are normal? OK. Convulsiones, see or no? No. No. Prevent seizure like activity. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. I'm also a babysitter. Does she have the uh, child's mother's phone number? Uh, and she's coming, and she is in the How far? How far way. away is she? Maybe right or less yeah. than two minutes. OK, let her know. We need to take her over to the hospital, OK? OK. Yeah, I got it. Get that spun around. Right now, all her vital signs are checking out normal, which is a huge relief from what we initially saw when we first arrived on scene. But we want to still definitely need to get her over to the hospital for further evaluation. Hey, James, increasingly yeah. more responsive. OK. Had me scared for a second there. Hey, good work, you guys. See you later. Everybody back up. Back everybody up. LA from Malibu Triathlon. LA, go ahead. We got a unresponsive person at the finish line. I'm giving you a heads up. We may be requesting a resource. CPR in progress. 71, squad 68, lifeguard rescue 300, cardiac arrest at the finish line of the event. Squad 88, you available? LA squad 88, that's affirmative. We're available for anyone. We were dispatched to a cardiac arrest. He had immediate care from EMTs on scene that initiated CPR, and then the patient was resuscitated. Somebody's in cardiac arrest, there's no pulse, and they're not breathing. It, doesn't get any worse than that. Some patients are viable, some patients aren't. LA from Malibu Triathlon, confirming Tower 10. Tower 10 for the response. Cops are coming in. And so when we have uh, air squad, we'll uh, put on the Nomax, provide some safety in the landing zone area. Continue compression. LA, Copter 21, we're out camp 8, in route. Yeah, let's see if the guards are out there uh, clearing the bees. LA Copter 21 on scene. Okay, chops never went down. Ready to back with three. In the air squad, we're a full paramedic unit. Statuses are cleared, going to fly. We have all the capabilities to defibrillate him, push cardiac medications, whatever needs to be done to sustain life. So from here, we're going to go over to UCLA, which is about a six minute flight. LA Battalion 6, copy, fire 5. Also looking at the uh, smoke column. Let's start immediate move-ups into the valley, please. 
we have a large column of smoke from many miles out, we know that we're going to be dealing with a very significant fire. There's dire consequences if you make a bad decision. Copy, 22 on scene. 22 copy on scene. 22 putting the 9-1 crew in. Go ahead and land on the western edge. OK, copy. Steep terrain in there. Santa Clarita is a prime spot for brush fires. It's mountainous with horrible terrain. You also get the Santa Ana winds that come through there, so it just sets the stage for fire to get big fast. You guys are making your way right into the base of the fire. All right, let's, let's figure an alternative here with uh, getting some water on this thing. To this, we'll try and get a couple drops on this from the uh, fire ship. That first initial attack with aircraft is really the game to keep it from spreading and getting out of control. We work very closely with the crews. And if we're dropping on a fire line, we want to try and get that water close enough to them, but not so far away that we leave fire in between them to create or pose a danger to them. Fire ship drop on that. Water! The uh, conditions change, certainly with wind and terrain and rotor wash. This exponentially makes that operation that much more dangerous. The uh, winds are definitely getting a little stronger. They just want water support on the Zulu side. Yeah, that's where they're going to have the most difficulty is getting to that right flank. The accuracy of our water drops are, are very important. Sometimes the difference between controlling the fire or it getting away might be one drop. Precision is mandatory. Come on, get on down there. That was a miss. Flared it up. Well, that was a miss. It, uh, it probably flared it up. Get it! Get it! Hey, let's go! Yeah! Hey, help him out! We gotta get some water on that. He's gotta get a good hit on it. Slow the, just put this thing to bed. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't hair raising to see this is a big drop and miss it. Where's the wind blowing right now? What I like to do is to line up two or three helicopters together and have them drop in sequence. They can cover each other. If one ends up missing, the other aircraft can make up for it. Uh, 16 right shoulder. <laughs> oh, Larry, <we're> coming. <laughs> yeah, I see. Go for Helco on 5-9. Boy, he thread the needle on that one, so that flare up, that was a good shot. But it looks like uh, 16 just uh, took pretty good care of it. Hi, this is LA County Fire. Is this emergency for you or someone else? No, my father. How old is he? He's on the stroke and blue. His eyes are open, but he's, his one side is like twitching. Okay. Okay, let's get him down on the ground, flat on his back. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, guys. Babe! No! Uh, it looks like a 72 year old male. I want to know how long he's been down. You know, how long has he been, you know, unconscious or what kind of medical history he has. That's what I'll determine if we're going to work the patient or if we're just going to call it, you know, or pronounce him. PD on scene, so they might have some information. All right, let's get to work. The patient's family is very scared. It's very important for us to calm everybody down and control the scene. I know they're at a 10. I want to bring them down to maybe a 2, because if they're not thinking correctly, then I can't get the proper information. Crucial to the patient's care. We get more bees with honey when we do that. He was seizing when we got here, and then he just had another one locked up for about uh, 30 seconds. It took us a few seconds to realize that the patient was not in full arrest and was uh, showing signs of uh, seizure. And the whole last time he had a seizure. 
About uh, three months ago. Three months ago? Yeah. Thank you. When the patient is actively seizing, he's not getting enough oxygen to his brain, there's a very good chance the patient may go into cardiac arrest. 212, 100. 212, 100, thank you. Sats got up to uh, 95. This could be a life or death situation for the patient. Pulse is really that high? Yeah, it's pretty fast. OK, I got five milligrams, 2,000 yeah. All right, thank you. We need to administer some medicine for him to stop actively seizing. The long-term effects of a prolonged seizure will definitely be brain damage. Seconds actually count. I'll get an IV in the back once you get them loaded up, but I'll uh, give another five right now. I empathize greatly with families. You know, I can't imagine just watching your family member, you know, be ill or injured or dead and not being able to do anything. So he's had about five seizures now, Calvin. Lasts in about 20 seconds each, and then he'll go off for 15, and he'll go right back into it. Okay, five on board. Total 10. Total 10. He's having another one. All right. Looks like he's having a focal. A focal seizure can be just as dangerous as a tonic-clonic seizure. After we gave him the medicine, his body started to calm down a little bit, but he's still actively seizing. Yeah, he started seizing again. Well, I do feel pressure when family members are around and uh, I'm trying to do a good job in front of them. Get him on a high flow of oxygen in the back of the ambulance. Perfect, excellent. So just a PR in order. He's not seizing anymore. We are going on a uh, female who's 35, and she's in labor right now in an RV. What a Ninth baby, oh God, it's probably out. Yeah. This is her ninth pregnancy. So in the back of our minds, we're thinking, we got to get this person to the hospital because the more pregnancies they tend to have, the faster the baby comes out. In the back, how do you get in? How do you get in? Yo, no, through here. Over here? There's no entrance here. Oh, right here. Right here? Yeah. Hello? What's going on, dear? The baby's coming right now. Does it feel like it's coming out? I get some light, Richelli. Yeah. What day is your due date? In two weeks. Yeah. In two weeks? Okay. Did your water break yet? Okay. okay. Let me know when you're gonna have your other contraction. Okay. Let me know when you're having one. So I can time. Sorry. I got vitals. I'm ready. 74. I'm sorry. 88 on the heart rate. Hey, by the she's gonna vomit. 118. Right there over there, dear. I'll get you a can. There. 118 over 93. Got it. Here you go, Paco. 98 on the whole socks. Right there, dear. Delivering a baby is scary because you're going from one patient to now two. And then that second patient is way more fragile. It, it needs way more attention. As amazing, as crazy as that may sound, like, I mean, we're just firefighters. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I'm not in a, in a hospital setting. I got my gloves on. I'm going to deliver the baby if you need me in there. I don't want to deliver a baby in the field. I'd rather it be delivered in a nice, sterile, safe environment. It's better for the mother and the child. How are you feeling right now? We've been here for a few minutes. We haven't had any contractions so far, right? How long has it been? What, did you hear what we pulled up? OK, so when we were on scene, she had one, but we haven't had anything in a minute. The gurney is right out here. If she can make it okay, here, we can do it. If we can make it right out there. Yeah. All right, we're going to go for it. Let okay, me know. Get ready, guys. Get it set up. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? I don't want you to get hurt, so just nice and relax, OK? Here you go. Just watch your feet. OK, OK, let's go. Gurney, gurney, gurney. Breathe through. You're, you're OK, hon. Breathe through. Here we go. We got you. We got you. We got you. Here we go. Breathe through, hon. Breathe through. Right here. OK. You're good. I got you. Let me know when it's over, OK? I'm going to roll you on your right or your left. How do you feel? Let's go to my left side for me. Come towards me. There you go. That's Bring your first. knees up. Bring your knees up for me. Perfect. There you go. Nice and relaxed. Breathe through, OK, hon? Hey, this is our first. Breathe through. There you go. Well, as we're walking her out, she starts having this contraction, and I started thinking, like, oh, man, maybe we should have stayed and delivered inside versus trying to deliver this baby in the back of an ambulance. Very good. Nice deep breaths. There you go. And I definitely don't want to deliver this baby on the sidewalk. All right, that was your last one. Let me know when you're Bring in another one right now. So it's about 30, this one was 30, about 30 seconds. So I jump in the back of the ambulance in case she does deliver the baby. In that case, I'll deliver the baby myself, take care of the newborn, and Paco can concentrate on taking care of the mom. Oh, are you on? Just relax. Yes. Let me, uh, do me a favor. Can you just bend your knees? Please. I just want to look, OK? 
Same with this. Okay. All right. Good. Still not you there. Let me right? know. You let me know if you get the urge to push or you feel like it's coming, okay? You've been through this before, right? So <laughs> we'll take good care Just of you, okay? Relax. Let me see your arm. You feel another one again? All right, we're having an attraction. Okay. Do me a favor, man. Get that heater on. Crank it as high as you can in case you have a baby. Eat her off. Thanks. Oh, just a few seconds. Just like, keep it nice and organized so that we know where. Oh, you're shaking. Hold on. Hold on. You having one right now? Yeah. We're here. Perfect. Jumper 41. All right, here we go. All right, looks like we got a uh, jumper up off the 105. Oh, jumper? Billy, can you fire up I see you have a camper at East South 105. We're holding this guy that wants to jump off the freeway. No, no, no. Por favor. No. Please hurry up. Ma'am. We got the bridge. We do get up there, and he's still there. We just want to try and contain him so he can't move, and then hopefully we can get the airbags underneath him if he does decide to jump. So we'll get up there, take a look, see if he uh, hasn't jumped yet. If he hasn't, we'll try to make contact with him and uh, see if we can't talk him down. Whenever I approach a suicidal person, I don't want my voice to be the last thing that they ever heard. There's no playbook for a psych rescue. You got to rely on your experience and hopefully a little bit of your street knowledge to get you through these calls. Sir, we're with the paramedics. We're here to help. It looks like some kind of psychiatric. He's all bloody, though. I don't know where the blood's coming from. He's all distraught right now, so. Oh, hey, hey, hey. All right, you know, hey, I'm going to get him over, Do you want me to strip him blood, Dave, or? We're going to give him uh, medication to calm him down. Yeah? Oh. Eric, can you give me tape? Blood's coming from his lack on his finger. Pretty deep. Uh, Alex, primary looks clear. Just out finger. The scene is super chaotic. I start doing a head to toe. He starts banging his head on the ground. I ask an officer to help hold his head in place so that he stops hurting himself. His fingers are super bloody. I mean, they were like down to the bone. So we need to figure out his extent of his injuries. It's a bit intimidating to be around someone who's so willing and determined to hurt themselves that they probably don't care who else they're going to hurt along the way, which includes us. Oh. 120 on the right. Oh. Loosen it up. You might lose it. Mambo. You can see that? No? Do you have any medical problems? 148 on the sugar. We're going to give him uh, medication to calm him down. We want to remove it. So Aaron, just that hand injury, it looks like right now, and then besides him hitting his head. Yeah. Yeah, he's tacking out too, Dave. He's at 149. He's going to pass out right now. I gave him some pretty strong meds, so some midazolam. What happened? So this is what we've seen. We're driving behind, uh, behind them. All I, all I saw was something rolling. Like he came out of the car then. How many times did he roll? And he stayed like this three times. So he rolled about three times and then hit the wall? And then he, he tried to he jump. He tried to jump? Yeah. And you guys grabbed him? Yeah. That's when we came in and we grabbed him. Yeah. The so car he came out of, did it keep going? We kept going. You guys did an excellent job. You probably saved his life. He would have died if he would have went over that yeah. side. We're going to a female 34 who's altered shortness of breath and weak. Is she breathing normally? Como ella tiene una máquina de oxígeno aquí en la casa, yo se la puse, pero él no reacciona. We need to start CPR. Yeah. 30 times, 30 compressions. You start know. now. LA 9, copy. You're thinking in the back of your mind, how could somebody so young be in cardiac arrest? All right, pirate. What do we got? Is she breathing? Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, she's not breathing. We're going to have to breathe for her. Dan, I need a wrench for the OT. We're going to have to breathe for her. People that are fixed and dilated. Chris, let's just put it right yeah, here. Yeah, we're going to put it on the ground. Yeah, just let's go right here, guys. Start, Start compressions, and let's get a drop of BVN in there. Performing CPR, doing the compressions, the couch is sinking in. You don't want anything to sink. You want it on a hard surface. Even in tight quarters, we're going to make it work. Sugar's 533. 533 on the sugar. 
Uh, let's back everybody out. Back everybody out, please. Back. OK, back them. Back out. I always try to remove the family member from the scene just because it can be a traumatic experience watching us do CPR. First FE on board, 1725. First FE on board. When I have to go up and let them know, hey, your, your loved one has passed away, it always chokes me up when I have to tell them that. And I uh, hope I don't have to do that today. OK, we got a, uh, do we have an end title on that? 42. 42. Uh, no pulse. La enfermedad de ALS. OK, no pulmonic con los pulmones? No. OK. We're given compressions. Paramedics are given epinephrine, start in IVs, just so our chances to get pulses back are, are greatly improved. Continue as long as we have good compliance, we'll start getting it Bad compliance and it's beating. You got a pulse. You got a pulse. We got Second a pulse. on board. I got you got a pulse, so uh, keep going. Continue the bag. I'll Sorry. help you lift her when you need to lift her. You got it? Yeah. I got it, Bill. Yeah. Gotcha. AFib on the monitor. No no depression or elevation that I can see. St. Francis Base, LA County Squad 5 4 with a cardiac arrest with Ross. Let's go, Bob, from the back. Get out of here. Coming out. Watch it. Yeah. You got it, Billy? Yeah. You good? Good. Got it. Got it. Good. <laughs> to get pulses back and to save somebody's life, it's a it's the best feeling you have out there. It's a great accomplishment. 129 over 99. Ashley, you need anybody to go? Are you good? Okay. Good job, guys. Good job. So we just got a call for a gunshot wound. A 42-year-old male. Hey guys, we're gonna be staging at the uh, parking lot. We're right next to the scene. Copy that, we'll pull in with you. We're gonna stage for police. They've gotta make sure to clear the area and make sure the gunman's not still there before we can go in on scene. Usually with a gunshot wound, it all depends on where the actual bullet went through. If it's in the abdomen, in the torso, in the head, that's when it's a lot more serious. Time is ticking away. If this person is still alive, they have a chance. And now we have a very small window to help them. So time is everything. Is there, is there a victim? Is there somebody there? Oh, Stan, if you want to hold pressure on his stomach. Yep, oh. we can do that. We're going to just put more pressure over the top of it, OK? Yeah. All right. There you go. Hold it there. Did you get kicked or kneed or? Yeah. Did you get shot once? I said just one shot through the lower abdomen and one exit wound out the back. Biggest thing he needs is surgery. I'm going to reassess his blood pressure. I'm just going to try to keep it above 90. Take a deep breath. All right, lungs are clear bilateral. I don't know how much bleeding is going on inside his abdomen. You still don't know how long he has. People can spiral down faster than you think. There's only so much that we can do when we have a gunshot wound to the abdomen. The guy that shot you, what do you call him? What did he go by? I don't know. You don't know? Well, he was just sitting here. And he asked me for my drink, he said, and my phone. All right, listen, we're going to ah. lift your hand up if you can. We're going to try to wrap that on there, OK? Once they get a blood pressure, we'll go ahead and load him up, guys. All right. Hold it tight. Hold it tight. Oh. Let's get him down quick, oh. OK? This patient, he's starting to get a little pale. We have to try to get this patient off scene as quickly as possible and to the hospital so they can get into the trauma center, get into surgery. I see he's alert. Let's get him moving right now. Let's get this going. Hey. All right, I'll have him set it up. All right. There you go. So uh, I'll my life. We're headed to a three vehicle. Came in as person trap. Engine's on scene. We got three vehicles and two squads. If this is going to be like a triage and variety yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Motor vehicle accidents, they can range from very minor to very severe. So we got to kind of prepare for anything that's thrown our way when we pull up on scene. It is on a road that we have had multiple fatalities in the past. Hey, Cap, what do you got? I'm going to send you guys this one. OK. I'm go ahead and handle that one over there. I'm thinking that one's probably going to try to be VLS begin our triage process, and we do identify three patients. One is minor. Another one seems to be a little more injured just from the airbag. And our third patient is the most critical. So we're going to go ahead and address that patient first. Oh! 
We do have patients that are in severe pain, and it can be difficult to try to move them onto the gurney, but ultimately we have to do what we have to do. Oh, my leg, please, my leg! Oh, my leg! Oh, my leg! Which one? We got obvious left femur fracture. Her injuries could range anywhere from a single small fracture to multiple fractures throughout the leg. Right there. It's okay. All right, ma'am, they're putting a device on your leg. It's going to help relieve some of that pain, OK? I'm going to give you some morphine, help okay. with the pain as well. Oh, they're going to give you some medicine. She's in a lot of pain, so we do want to treat with some pain medication. But our job is ultimately patient stability. There is far more that the hospital can do that we can't. Hey, if uh, if we send you out, I might hang back just to make the call on the yeah, patient. Yeah. But I'll meet you over there. Called an intersection for a 40-year-old female. Her primary damage is going to be to the front of the vehicle. We're going to go from that critical patient down to the next less severe patient and take it from the top, assess, treat, and transport. It's going to be a 34-year-old male. There is some substantial front-end damage. The speeds on this road is approximately 40 to 50 miles an hour. Ow, ow, ow. On-scene vitals are 140 over 90. No, it hurts a lot. Uh, he does have some abrasions and facial trauma, as well as some uh, left wrist pain. Yeah. We need to put anybody on a bench seat or anything? Are we good? No, we're good. We are going on a auto versus pedestrian hit and run. There's multiple injuries that can happen when a person's struck by a vehicle, depending on how they're struck. If this person's bleeding out, if they're not breathing, then every second's going to matter. Witnesses said that the victim was thrown up and over the car. Uh, oh, well, 47 is there first. Guys, we need everybody to step back. Give the medics room to work. Do we need a uh, collar? That's my jacket. I just put it on their seat. Ma'am, can you put the cigarette out because we get oxygen? Sir, this is going to go up underneath your neck. Right. Sir, could you step uh, back? We just need to give some room right here. We backed up. The scene is super chaotic. That's why we have a captain on scene who handles scene safety, which allows me to then hyper-focus on my specific task at hand because I know my crew is so solid and they're going to help keep me safe. Oh, um, we got pain to your spine? No, no. Please. 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 So we're going to bring ah. this down by your side now, OK? Yeah. Yep. That was popped out of there. Ah. Uh, yeah, we got a compound. We're dealing with a high impact, high speed collision. And thinking of femur fractures and that instability that comes with it, you're just trying to get the patient transported as quickly, but as free of pain as possible, which can definitely be a challenge sometimes. I want you to hold this for this wrist, OK? Ready? Hey, Deputy, could you clear some of the people back? Everybody back up. Back everybody up. Guys, we need everybody to step back, please. Oh, my God, please. As soon as we get you in the back of the ambulance, we're going to use some pain meds, OK? Move back. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody needs to move back right now. Are we going to jail? Big step back. Are we going to jail? Back everybody up. Oh, well, we backed up. Hey, time to get off scene. Let's go. Now. Sometimes the people I serve can be very difficult. Scene safety is huge. You got to protect yourself. At 41s, you need to protect yourself at all times. Pick it up a little bit. We got to get out of here. Hey, do you have a history of seizures? Yes. Please, just send somebody. Our paramedics are on the way. They're going to be there shortly. OK. All right, guys. Uh, the ALS response squad coming with us. It's a seizure. A young one, male, three years old. Any child that we go on that's having a seizure kind of brings me back to the one time that my son had a seizure. I'm a professional. I, I know what to do in these calls. And as I was holding my son, I was almost starting to panic. When you experience it with one of your own, it's different, and it helped me really empathize with families and parents, especially. What's going on, ma'am? He has a history of seizures? Yes. How long has he been seizing for, ma'am? About five, ten minutes now. OK. With this little boy, he's not in a good place. When a body is seizing like that, it's not getting properly oxygenated. The body is exhausted. And so the longer it takes for us to get them to the right place, the worse the outcome could potentially be for the patient. So time is critical. Yellow 14 on the Braslow. Does he take medications for seizures? Yes. Does he take them every day? Yes. Has he missed any? 
No. Mikey, does it feel hot? You want to try and get a line going? Yeah, Cap, we're going to need a copter. LA Engine 37, start an air squad, please. Status seizure. The seizures, especially in children, there's always an added element of urgency. Children's Hospital is about 60 miles away from the Palmdale area. So to make that drive would create a timeline that is unacceptable. So that's a helicopter flight that has to be made. Did we give him the Versette already? It's right now, I'll give him right now. All right, let's get him moved. Right now, it's important for us to get medication on board to try and stop this seizure. It's important for us to get the helicopter here as soon as possible to get him transported. And we need to get to where they're going to land. So we're looking at now 20, 30 minutes straight seizing. When the body's seizing like that, complications ensue. OK, your right side looks good. Tails through the fence. You don't want chalks down? No. So obviously, with that much uh, Versed on board, let's watch his respiratory drive, make sure we're breathing for him if he good stops helmet. breathing. We've been monitoring it. Thank you. OK, chalk server went down. Ready in the back with three. I'm able to relate to these parents with what they're going through and the fear they have and the unknowns. And I can relate to that because I saw my own son. You're scared. You're worried. You know, these are your kids, and you want nothing but the best room. You don't want them to be hurt. It's scary as a parent. I got your dose of midazolam if needed. And now he's good. Copy. Uh, copter 22, we're en route to Children's Hospital, LA. This is like the culmination of everything. All the drills, all the training that we've done to finally get my first house structure fire off probation. Like, it's all come to this, and it's game time. We got a channel yet? Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen a compliment come heavy. up yet. Oh, we got heavy smoke. Heavy smoke. Mask it up, sir. LA Engine 41. I got heavy smoke and fire coming from a single story, single family dwelling. Oh. Engine 41 is going to be initiating an aggressive interior fire attack. Have the queen go topside and passing command to the next in engine. At this time of night, we could have people trapped. So my mindset is on life right now. We got to make sure everybody's out of this house. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's get a mask up. LA 16 on scene, do you have an assignment? It's night, people are sleeping. We have a bedroom on fire. We're not sure if anybody's trapped in the residence. We need to get in there and start search and rescue. You're foolish. We're going to do a search. So you get on a tip. This is it. So to have Captain Woods tell me to take the nozzle, like I was ready for it. I was not going to say no, and I was not going to apologize to take that and go in there. So, Schooler, you're going to keep it in check. Schooler's on the hose with me now. And I want her on the tip because this is her first house fire. So I want to make sure that all her stuff's on. If anything goes wrong with her, I'm right there to grab her, and we can make it back out. Hey, you with me still, camera? All right, here we go. Hold on. Look at this. Is it getting hot? You doing all right? Yeah. Let's keep moving in. Keep moving in. Come on. I'm not able to see. It's a moth to the flame. You can see the flames coming out of the bedroom. So it's definitely get as close as you possibly can, as low as you possibly can, and really try and find the seed of the fire so that you're not just spraying water for the sake of it. OK, hey, you keep it in check while I try and get a search, OK? Yeah. It goes against, like, every fiber in your body to go into a burning building, no matter how much gear you think you have on. It's never enough. OK, Schwiller, you stay here. Down the road. You stay here with her. You keep it in check. I'm going to get a primary. Hey, I'm going to push in a little bit and get around the corner. It's definitely a lot of pressure, but it's what I've trained for, and it's what I live for at the end of the day. So hey, keep it in check. Hey, you with me, sir? Down the road. Schwiller, down the road. Hey, you with me, sir? Down the road. Schwiller. My biggest fear is that Schooler could be burning herself right now. And at that point, I decide, hey, we got to put some water on this. Am I going to get in the door? OK. What was burning in the bedroom? Was there any candles going or anything? I mean, we had a heater on, like a portable heater. 
a portable heater on? Yeah. Okay. You didn't know? You didn't get water? Yeah. Yeah, I need some rice. You need more rice? Yeah. We got some feed out of that right corner. Electrical spark. We got utilities. Negative. We're uh, working on that right now. How we doing? Everything good? Are right, you guys doing all right? A little bit of smoke, but no fire. We got a, a negative on the primary. Okay. Doctor? Yeah, we got knocked out. Hey, a uh, second down is good. Okay. Hey, 41. Score. What? Right here. Yeah. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Yeah, I'm backing out of my hard line. Okay. Score. Come on yeah, out. Coming. You guys all right? Nobody got burned, right? No. Yeah. Are you going to burn score? Nope. All right. Yeah, male 65 first, like it says, in a wheelchair. I mean, 65, maybe an innocent bystander, but you think he's instigated, huh? At 16, we go on a lot of GSWs, which are gunshot wounds. The shootings are rampant. I start losing count. Uh, There's a wheelchair over here. Right there. Just see where he's hit. You're good right here. OK. Let's go ahead and just cut it off. Got it. Do what got we got. Sir, you get hit anywhere else? Let me see the arm. There's one hole right there, Danny, on the right arm. Danny, yeah. uh, I got another one here on the side, Danny. Then you know what? Yeah, we got to strip and flip him. Where's, that, where's the light? He's, he's right here. Let's take it all off. We've got to make sure that we count every single bullet wound, because if we miss a wound, he could bleed out and die. Yeah, we got to get him down, Danny. Yeah. One, two, two three. Let's go. There's actions that you just robotically do to try to give this person the highest probability of life. You don't have time to think. You need to fall back on your training and just get in and do it. Uh, two gunshots, one to the right upper arm and one to the right buttocks, upper buttocks. Uh, how's he doing? How you doing? Yeah, he's a... Uh, I had a, a 90 pound. Oh. Oh. You guys get a BP yet? Uh, yeah, he couldn't hear it. The fact that the patient's disabled, he's out on the street, possibly homeless, means he's going to have like a way more medical problems than just an average person would. I need to make sure his vitals were stable. Yeah, so we'd, where is it? Arm and then hip? It, arm and hip, that's all we found so far. We flipped the hey, body. All right, blood pressure, boss? 90 over 60. Oh, yeah. Copy. He's responding very oh. slowly. Okay. Yes, I'm treating the multiple GSWs that he has. However, he could have a bunch of other medical problems that kind of compounds the issues that we're trying to help. Relax, Hold on, relax, buddy. Yeah, tourniquet. Tourniquet on. With his vitals being stable, now I can give pain meds. And he possibly could be going into shock, so I'm actually going to start giving him fluids. Then we want to get him over to the nearest trauma center as fast as possible. And then I got a good one. All right, boy. You're good to go here. Good on. Tapes, too. Thank you. That's good more enough. tape, more tape. More tape. About three pieces. Uh, Carrie, you got a flat ready. Each other in half, please. I got flat. an IV right here. Right, right towards Buckle. Ah. Oh, sorry, buddy. Sorry. You know we're going to have to roll you on that side, OK? Yeah. We're going to roll you to that, the other side. Ah. Here we go. One, two, ah. three. Gonna... You're OK, boss. Just hold this on and watch that IV. Right here. Ah. Sorry, boss. Ah. 82 on the highway. So you got OK, you're good? Yeah, I'm good. OK. OK, we're good. Let's go. I got this. If you if you got to wrap around it, go for it. Cool. 90 over 60. We'll give him a bunch of fluids. How you doing, boss? Up, up. Leonard. My leads came off. Check my leads, please. Pupils are restricted. You OK? Leonard. Look at me. Give me a thumbs up. I'm trying to get him to communicate with me because I want to get an idea of how bad his injuries are. Leonard, how you feeling, boss? Is there a reason why he's not talking to me? Is he going into shock? Give me a thumbs up. All right, there you go. We're going to take care of you, OK, boss? Finally started talking to me, and I was like, oh, OK, cool, which was a huge relief because now I know you know, my pain meds are working, my fluid bolus is working, which ultimately ended into a positive outcome for me. LA County is probably one of the most unique areas in the United States. We have a lot of vehicles over the side where just extracting those patients to an ambulance is going to take 30 minutes, where as a helicopter, we can go in, hoist somebody down, make a rescue, and fly them to a trauma center within a matter of minutes. Helicopter 1-9 on scene. What were the injuries that are, they're saying? Lower legs, all they said. Copy down and left. I'm going to transition him out and hold him at the door. OK, guy. 
good to send the hook? You can send the hook. Okay, start the hook down now. As crew chief on a hoist rescue, I'm in the back operating the hoist, and I'm sending my downside crew member down to wherever the patient is. One nine downside. Looks good, your line looks good. Depending on the train, he'll either come off the hook and assess the patient, or he'll stay on the hook and make a rescue, and then we'll bring him back up to the helicopter. 40 feet of cable out. Pilot's going to get close to our target, and I'm going to guide him in, and then I'm going to get my downside rescuer right on that target. 75 feet of cable out. Continuing right for 10. In a perfect world, he arrives at the target the same time we arrive over it, and then we'll down to him. The uh, winds are definitely getting a little stronger. Hold your right. Hold Let's come forward for five. Our hoist rescues are very dangerous and high risk. Four. Three. It could be a very treacherous scenario very fast. Two. One. A little bit of a swing. Hold your forward directly underneath us. Loads on the ground, 100 feet of cable out. I got the target and said, we've located the patient. Looks in his hand, hold right there. Making the connection now. Got a sign to come up, up helicopter. Oh. Good. 10 feet from the step. Coming forward. Forward flight. Coming up to the step. Transitioning in. Okay. We got a broken arm and a broken leg. We're flying him to the hospital in an air ambulance. It'd be no different than going in a paramedic ambulance by ground, but we're getting there a lot quicker. We're coming out of Sand Canyon area with one patient, 35-year-old male. I got to give you some pain, man. You're going to surgery. Hold your breath. Relax. This patient had the best outcome possible. The air squad transported to the hospital in a short amount of time, and he's able to tell a story about it. Watch your breathing, okay? All over. Top part's over. You're lucky to be alive.